Good evening, how are you? Well, it's been a scorcher today, up by 100, and uh, now it's uh, down in the uh, low 80s. So it's just comfortable to go for a walk now. <clears throat> I spent most of the day scribbling again. Uh, last night I had a chance to be on uh, R.A. Melber, and we discussed the, uh, the Mar-a-Lago case and the uh, classified documents, and basically what we were considering was <laughs> what is poor Nauta facing if he stands with Trump with lesser counsel, will he go down with the ship in order to save his patron? Talk about false patriotism. Or will he decide he should go and get himself uh, a deal with the government to turn on Trump? Hard to say. Uh, the reaction I got from people is, are you crazy? Of course you should cooperate. So we'll see what happens there. There is a kind of creeping justice happening. And what I'm talking about is uh, the thing I've mentioned a couple of times, the comparison with Watergate, in which lawyers on the one hand uh, do the bad deed and lawyers on the other hand end up prosecuting the first set of lawyers. Uh, in this uh, breakdown, there have been questions asked about a whole variety of lawyers and who seem to be getting into the crosshairs of uh, special counsel Jack Smith. Rudy Giuliani stands front and center today because the D.C. bar today made a recommendation that he be disbarred for how he conducted himself in Pennsylvania and that uh, what he said was uh, frivolous and destructive of the process and the proper conduct of an attorney. Now, that's still not the end of it. It's a recommendation, but it's, it's given a lot of weight. And so we'll have to see what happens. There are opportunities for counsel for Rudy Giuliani to say something on the way up. Eastman is facing a disbarment in California. Uh, one uh, lawyer, Trump lawyer, is resigning as a lawyer so they don't have jurisdiction over him to disbar him. Interesting approach. So we have that. The uh, next uh, prosecution up, uh, and it, it could involve Rudy, although it looks like he's tried to cooperate with the government, but I can't imagine that he could agree to anything that would satisfy Jack Smith if he has the goods on uh, Giuliani. And Giuliani has been so far out there talking just like the others that I don't know how he, he'd get around um, being charged with nothing. I think he'd have to be charged with something as part of a deal. So, But the, uh, the big push appears to be uh, Jack Smith, the special counsel, is looking at the false electors and all that that meant. Now, how does that tie in Trump? Well, it's very interesting. First of all, we're familiar with Georgia and the effort by Trump personally on the phone recording to get Happensberger, the Secretary of State, to give him the votes he needed to beat Biden, who had won the state in Georgia. Now, there's a similar, uh, similar circumstance in Arizona. In Arizona, we have efforts by Trump to go to uh, Ducey, the governor, to get him to help him, and he wouldn't do so. And Bauer, who was the uh, Speaker of the House, who you may have heard him in the July 6th hearings on the Hill, uh, he was also approached by Trump. So this, Trump has talked to two people in uh, Arizona, and the special counsel has been investigating the two frivolous lawsuits there. One was uh, made on behalf of uh, the uh, party leader, and so he's being looked at, and he was, if I remember correctly, one of the signatories on one of the questionable uh, elector uh, fraudulent elector ballots to try to overturn the, overturn the election. There have also been questions they've been looking at Nevada and I think Wisconsin. And so there have been subpoenas there. 
and the leadership on of the and the Trump side, his cohorts have been summoned to the grand jury, and so it looks like the Justice Department dragging its feet notwithstanding. Jack Smith is flexing his muscles appropriately to talk to all the possible leaders to make whatever deals he's making, which we won't know for some time. And uh, I would think we're up to ramming speed on the electors. Now, keeping in mind that the electors were part of the strategy that if that didn't work to get the vice president to throw out the election, then they would pivot as they did, it appears, to violence. So this would be a final comeuppance for Trump and his minions. So the, the, there's things that seem to be closing in. Now, is this affecting the presidential race for Trump? He says not, and he's gotten some gain in the polls. But the real question is, is this the kind of stuff that doesn't finally bring you down. Is America really going to want to choose as a president a man who has been indicted in D.C., indicted in Florida? It appears he's going to be indicted uh, by Jack Smith for the bigger plot with the uh, fraudulent electors. We have uh, Georgia is looking to bring a, a charge. There is the civil suit against Trump. In the old movies, at least as a kid, as I remember them, you had a situation in which the floor would come up and the walls would close in and the ceiling would close down. And the question was, how are they going to get out of this room? And if it was the good guys, they, they always found a way to get out. If it was the bad guys, eh, you know, the old movies weren't that cruel. Well, I think the the walls and floors are coming in on Trump, and I'm more optimistic than I've been in a long time that uh, he's going to be encircled. What's missing? Democrats have to start talking about the fact that we have a paranoid style of politics in the Republican Party, meaning that they play the victims and they care about these kind of values, even at the expense of the issues that don't favor them, that are the Republican issues. And in this kind of victim, mentally defective strategy, they're locked into this. And it's, uh, it's not unprecedented in American history. And they will go into that in the future. But uh, that's, that's where the politics are. And the question is, how could anyone win a minority election? Well, it's happened before. And part of the answer is, if you can win the electoral vote in the right way, then you can succeed at that. So that's uh, part of the, part of the pro problem. But the, uh, the direction, the vectors are feeling better now than they have felt. Uh, finally... And one of the questions is, uh, are you hot and bothered? And the answer is the world is hot and bothered. What we have with warming oceans and melting ice caps and rising sea levels and heat in the water too warm for the fish to survive, they're coming up. And some of these shark bites may reflect that, that they're not finding the food in the water. And some of the animals on land, I think you'll see the same thing. So uh, have we passed the tipping point? Well, if government hasn't done anything, and we've gone from 350 parts of uh, carbon emissions to uh, 434, I think was the last number, we're in a really bad place. And some parts of the world are going to be safer than others. And that's, that's pretty serious stuff. Uh, returning to uh, the prosecutions, I think we have to keep in mind that when the Republican far-right 
Uh, the paranoid style of politics is evident. We have to be concerned about threats, threats to prosecutors, threats to witnesses, very mob-like kind of stuff. We see one good example of that in the case of this uh, fella that apparently had targeted Obama. He's been caught, arrested, and he's going to be taken care of. But we're seeing a lot more of this, and it goes to show that the judge down in Florida was wrong. Judge Luce Cannon, Luce is my additional descriptor for her position because she's shown, her, shown herself to be biased, but she persists in her positions. And one of them that I think reflected bias was not to keep secret the 84 witnesses who have been identified by the prosecution as the likely witnesses at the trial and who Trump and Nauta are not supposed to have any communications about the case. And so we have a we have a very edgy situation, both on a prosecutorial level and on a political level. And we have some trouble separating the two. So it's going to take vigilance on the part of Jack Smith and his team. And it's going to take us, the people, we the citizens, to call them out when they're doing what they're doing. Now, if you saw Ari last night, and I was on with uh, Libby Casey, a uh, bright lady, Washington Post editor, a lot of experience. And the two of us were analyzing uh, where we stand. And at one point, Ari asked me, what do I think should happen and, or will happen in connection with the uh, classified documents that Trump has improperly? And I said, I think there's a 90 or 95% chance of conviction. And I think he should immediately, when convicted, step back and be in custody. He has these documents. It's dangerous that he has these documents. It's dangerous what he has or may be doing with them. Uh, we see these threats, which come as a result of his unmuzzled being to do and treat the people who are prosecuting him as targets for uh, a, vendetta, a vendetta, because who can talk against Trump in Trump's mind? And his victimhood has entered into a special area, thus my discussion of this old theory by Hofstadter, which talks about the paranoid style in American politics. We've had extremists in our history who have embraced this. And if you want to read something about it, Hofstadter, H-O-F-S-T-A-D-T-E-R, Richard. Uh, he, in fact, that's the name of it, the uh, paranoid style of politics in America. So, America's on the move, not always in great directions, but there's hope that we're going to bring these bastards to justice. So, hope you had a good day. Hope you didn't get too hot. And so I say goodbye to you in the still air of my cathedral of trees. All the best. Bye-bye.